All right, y'all, so in this one, we're going to be going over some more VV and Ikomi stuff, and primarily we'll be focusing on the Omi token and we'll be focusing on um, some of the comments and statements from the community. People are digging into it, researching, and one actually stood out to me. Now, this is why there's sort of a love-hate relationship with me and VV and me and Ikomi. I believe in the project. I believe in the team. I believe that their goals and objectives are good. I believe that what they want to accomplish is amazing. But this is why you can hear me call them incompetent a lot because, and this is why there's any hesitance when it comes down to me believing that the project can reach its full potential. It's because from what they've shown me, they're not very competent. At, the, at a certain point, when you make a mistake one or two times, fine, three or four, fine. But at the point where you're three, four, five years into mistakes and the, and the same things, it's like, that's just a habit at this point. It's not a mistake anymore. And I wish more people in the community would hold them accountable and speak up when situations like this occur, because then it would force them to do something different. Hire someone who's gonna hold you all accountable and make sure you all are speaking and communicating things properly the way that they need to be communicated and, and, and make sure the decisions make sense because a lot of the decisions, they don't seem to be making sense. Um, so I don't know if they're just really this uneducated in the space that they're jumping into because the, the things that they specialize in, like, like the IP and stuff, they do that well because they specialize in that. So of course they're gonna do it well, but that just leads me to believe that they need to hire someone more well-versed in crypto and, and law and other things that could particularly impact this project. So yeah, th this is this is what we're gonna be going over. Like Dr. Profit, if you don't know who this is, he's one of the biggest mega whales in VV. Um, yeah, like he he's 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 really up there. So what he tweeted was that maybe Bit4X did not get the license. I would also speculate that they should have never served US clients. Now, I will point out that he acknowledged that this is just speculation, it's some of his thoughts. Um, exchanges that have not applied for a license are advised to close their accounts. If they truly shut down, they basically followed instructions of SFC. So, he's been digging, he's been doing some research, and he's drawn the conclusion fairly quickly that he doesn't think they should have ever served you as clients. This is the part that bothers me with Vivi and Ecomi. Dr. Profit, he's busy. He's a very wealthy man. Or maybe he's not busy. Maybe he's retired. I don't know this guy. I don't know his life. I don't, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really know him. So maybe he just has a lot of free time. But regardless of that, they should be paying someone to be doing what Profit is doing. But I'm working under the assumption that Dr. Profit is still working. But regardless, he did the slightest bit of research and due diligence and came to a conclusion that they probably shouldn't be serving you as clients. How is it that you have the most powerful brands in human history? They've used this as excuses, licensing, and they, they this stuff takes time, and we want to make sure we do things the right way because of regulations. All of these has been used as excuses, yet they do things where you should have probably did this the right way and this wouldn't have happened. So sometimes when it's beneficial to them, they need time to do things the right way. But when it's not, it's like they, they use that when it's, yeah, when it's beneficial. It's not, it's not a consistent thing across the border because how much research was put into this exchange? Why Bit4X? What, what was the logic behind choosing Bit4X? Because I'm trying to understand because this guy literally did the smallest amount of research and, and drew a conclusion like this. So who else researched this from the Ecomi end? So, and, and, and you're supposed to be protecting your licensors. You're supposed to be protecting your audience, your fans, your users. It's your job to dig into these companies. To work with Disney, they dig deep in, into you. They dig deep into you. It looks like Vivi just throws things on anything just to, like, what was the per? And and it this this is the thing that that gets me with Vivi because it kind of gives legitimacy to the fudders who say things like, 
they move with this token as if they're scamming, they're just using it for a payday and stuff like this. Because if they just threw this up on any exchange that would accept them just to get an influx of cash so they could sell and make a little bit of profits, which I think that there's been some wallets showing that some of the team wallets or member wallets or something like that have been selling, you know, it gives legitimacy to certain claims where if you were out in front of this communicating and explaining to us what's going on, all this speculation that makes sense wouldn't exist. So look at this. Dr. Prophet also um, post looks like they haven't applied for the license. So he got a little bit more. He, he says that they, they didn't even apply for the license. So that's probably why they have to have to close down. <laughs> This does seem likely. Do you know in these shutdown situations what typically occurs to users' funds? Because this is an important question. Are they able to get them back? And if so, how long of a process may it be? He doesn't know that. Um, as you can see, I commented. No response, of course. Why would I get a response? Um, if this is true, would you still argue VV isn't incompetent? How long did it take you to do this research and they couldn't? Listen. I have nothing against Dr. Prophet. Like it's a lot of these guys who we were once, okay, not not really, I've never been friends with anyone like that, but I've never been against anyone. It's a lot of these guys who started turning against me when I stopped being a moon boy for the project. But it appears to me that he he's very good at what he does. So part of me wants to say he does his own research and due diligence and the fact that he has faith in this project, he's probably, you know, he knows some things. But then there's the other part of me where he does research like this and finds out the exchange doesn't look like we should have ever been on this exchange. And then he won't comment on a comment like mine. It's like another part of me, like I, I feel like he's over leveraged into this project. Yes, he's a rich guy, but he's also in the middle of a lawsuit if it's still going on. He also was in the middle of a lawsuit over this project. So obviously you're heavily invested in something if you, if there's enough money involved to be in a lawsuit over it. So this is why some things, when it comes to him, I have to take it with a grain of salt. And this is why that's the thing, that's that's what I always make sure I, I, I stress to people. Listen, you don't, de you don't know, I don't, I don't know these guys. I have nothing against these guys, but certain things just look weird and suspect to me. And he's probably a great guy. And he, he probably didn't expect to be in this situation. I trusted VV blindly. If I had his money with my trust in VV, I would have done some greatly stupid things as well, to be honest. So listen, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, like I can understand if this, if this is a man trapped in a situation and now he has to stay bullish. Or maybe he does know some things, maybe he has conviction you know, I, I don't know, but I just find some things weird and, and I like to talk about that. And I also like to point out the fact that this is research that VV was responsible for doing from the beginning. So why put us on some exchange like this? But let's go into a, a couple more because we do have a couple more. So Richard is, has been posting a lot about this. He says, I see a lot of fans who want to protect the team for their incompetence. Here, everyone is responsible, but the one with the greatest degree of responsibility is the Ecomi and VV team. The token was launched in 2019. You can't spend six years trading on a fraudulent exchange. It's a shame. To be fair, when the token was launched, a lot of exchanges then was probably fraudulent. You probably don't know which exchange is going to be around. That's a tough thing to do. And, and it's a lot of responsibility to put onto a company that's newer to the space and just trying to figure it out. So, like I said, it, I'm not against VV. I'm never against VV, never against Ecomi. I try to look at things from an open mind and I understand the position that they're in at that point in time. So they can't be blamed for not knowing. They can, however, be blamed for not putting us anywhere else. Why aren't we on any legitimate exchanges at this point, especially with the amounts of volume that you all have had at one point in time? Like, why? Why are we not on any legitimate exchanges? We've never got a clear answer on that. We were just to assume that it's all part of a strategy for the bull run or something like that. Like, that's an assumption, though. That was never verified by anyone at the VV team. 
Even meme tokens after their birth take between one and two years to appear on a level one exchange. Here, a video shows the number of hopeful people who wanted to buy the Omi token and ended up in absolute ruin, a shame. More empathy with those affected and less victimization of the team, please be professional. So yeah, it is sad that people sit here and go after, um, go after people who's lost a lot by trusting in this project, just wanting to be involved, falling in love with this project. Cause we've all been there. We, we, we all, I mean, my love is not the same as it once was, but we all have been there. Like the, especially the early stages of figuring out the project, seeing what's on it, noticing how cool it is, like getting involved with the parts of the community that's still pleasant. It's like, it's an experience like no other. And that's what made us all believe in Vivi so deeply. But it's like, I just watched the Wonka movie recently. It's like falling in love with a dream, like like seeing somebody, seeing Wonka as it's being built and then having the blinders taken off because they, and they're doing it to themselves. If this is not a scam, you can just communicate certain things or you can communicate the fact that you can't communicate certain things. No way you signed an NDA that says you can't talk about the fact that you signed an NDA. So you don't even have to tell us that you can't speak about something. You can just say, that's not a topic that we can speak about, but understand that we we know your perspective and we, and we have it under control. We are figuring this out. It's like, they don't get out in front of nothing. Some things, maybe a company isn't gonna jump out and say, okay, we acknowledge we were kinda incompetent when we made that decision. We didn't know what we were doing. Okay, maybe that's an unreasonable thing to expect from any company for them to actually acknowledge certain things. But you can come out and say something. Something can be said. Like, it's not too much to ask for something. Can we get something? You know? Because then the narrative is going to come out anyway. The narrative is going to get spun in a direction anyway. You might as well go out and control the narratives. You just let stuff run and try to keep delivering, yet you're... Everything you're delivering is subpar. I feel like so Vivi would not be in the state that it's in if they had better communication skills. Even with all the screwing up they're doing, communication would have solved a lot of these problems that they have. But check it out. He also said the team continues to send Omi to BitGit. It seems they are now accelerating the process for the token to be added to the spot innovation zone for trading. The addition of the token should have been last week. If they had done so many Bit4X users would be safe. Team pride and discipline. Then we got someone who posted here, just found this article from last year. Looks like Bit4X, Bybit, um, MaxC Global, and BitGet all labeled potentially unsafe and unregistered exchanges. So they're trying to get us on BitGet is what it seems, and that's not registered as well. That's an unregistered exchange as well. So it's just as bad as Bit4X. It's literally an exchange that's just as bad as 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 BitForex. So this this is this is the this is the stuff that makes me kind of worried because like what are you doing, bro? What like like what's happening right now? What what's going on? Um why like what's what's why why are these decisions being made? What are you doing to rectify this situation? Like where is the communication? I get it, you don't know what's going on. <clears throat> cool. This exchange went down, a lot of people are suffering, a lot of people are uncertain, and a lot of negative negativity is going on. Cool, that's fine, I get it. We can't do nothing about that, so put that to the side. I know people are gonna be upset and wanna know what's going on with their money, which they deserve to be upset. They deserve to know what's going on with their money. And it is your fault for having, them, having their only option to be on this weird fraudulent exchange. It's your fault, but Sitting here pointing blame ain't gonna help anything. So I'm okay pushing that to the side. Yeah, you're to blame, and you don't have nothing that you can really say about that because you don't know shit. So yeah, put, put it to the side. But what's the plan from here? What are you going to do to rectify this situation? What are you gonna do to make this situation right? Like, what, what are you going to do? Are you gonna do good by your users in any way? Are you going to, how? what are you gonna do about the OMI token? Like, what, what's going to happen Worst case scenario, what's the plan? Best case scenario, what's the plan? Like, are you coming up with plans? Do you have strategies? Where, where are we? What's going on? I don't feel like there's enough transparency and communication from this team and it makes 
it makes stuff look a lot worse than it possibly may be. But this is just one man's thoughts and one man's opinion, yo. Um, that that's pretty much that's pretty much it, man. I don't want this video to be too long. Just just my thoughts. Let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Let me know how you all feel. I'm just trying to keep an open mind. I'm trying to keep an open mind. I'm trying to be understanding towards Vivi, but I'm also empathetic and understanding towards the people who've suffered losses because of, once again, another one of Vivi's miscalculations. So, yeah, let me know. Let me know how you all feel about this, man, and everything that we've covered here. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.